No, no, no. If Annie wants to speak to me, she can call. I'm not the one being stubborn. Oh, 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 sorry. oh. sorry. Hold on. How about your watch? Where you going, eh? Sorry, it was my fault. Sorry. You're sorry? Oh, uh, go on. Wait, you think I'm being heartless? Like, what was I ever heartless? Remind me. Look, I haven't got time. Michelle wants everyone change into this new preventer inhaler because... Yeah, because she thinks it's going to work out cheaper. <clears throat> Thought as much. Someone has got to talk to her. And like I said... She's had me manually changing individual prescriptions since 9 o'clock this morning. I bet you a tennis rate even save a penny. Even if I fancied a flutter, I'd still say talk to Michelle. I really, really love you for trying this, but Annie knows how to pick up a phone. So, do I take it that you two aren't even speaking? I just think you should talk to Michelle. Oh, look, Archie, I haven't got time for this, OK? You need to sort it out like two grown-ups. Oh, are you trying to kill me? Oh, oh my God! Oh, oh. Oi, guess what Melody thinks? I don't need to. I'm in charge. Oh, if you're going to start pulling rank... Archie, I'm the senior practice nurse. Mm -hmm. If you're going to start getting funny, I'll speak to Julia. Oh, yeah? What about? The one day I iron a shirt. I've only just had this dry cleaned. Yeah, well, excuse me, I've only been here five seconds of bang. You've been looking where you were going. I'm sorry, this is your fault. My fault? You walked into me! You're trying to avoid a trap set by Cabbage Woman. Oh, just hang on a minute. Excuse me. Am I talking to you? No. Do I intend to? Well, let's hope not. Because if I want someone crashing around like King Kong, then giving me a load of old lip, I can go home and talk to two stroppy teenagers. You can wipe that look off your face and all. Give me a gracious apology oh. and I'm out of here. What? OK, fine. You don't want to apologise. There's nothing to discuss. I'm fine, by the way. Thanks for asking. That was my only good shirt and that coffee was scalding hot. But, hey, look, just find me a doctor and I'll get the hell out of your way. Assuming I don't trip a course, break my neck. Watch it. I am the doctor. You're the doctor? Yeah, and who are you? I'm your one o'clock. Mr Flynn. Dr Flynn. Yeah, I've got a PhD in political history. Ah. Well, you're not a proper doctor then, are you? OK, OK, look, hi, I'm Dr Bell. I've just been through 18 months of pre-registration and then slogged my way through two years of general practice and I didn't do all of that to be treated like this, so I would really like an apology. I'd like a Lamborghini. Doesn't mean it's going to happen. Look, I'll, I'll be honest, if you two are all there is, I think I'll call it a day. And don't worry, I'll see myself out. No, please, I'd... Feel safer if you didn't move. Cheek of it! Pet rabbit. The cabbage soup died. Lovely. I've got to go. Coward, repeat the question. What do you call a one eyed dinosaur? Do you think he saw us? What's he on about? One-eyed dinosaur. Do you think he's yours? I've got more. I've really got to go. What do you call a mushroom that's... <gasps> Relax, it'll keep. <gasps> Tired? You've been woken up at four o'clock in the morning by the person in the next room having what I can only describe as sex. You'd be tired. OK, let me talk you through this. We've got your manic depressives, delusional obsessives and my current favourite, double dip crazy BPD. That's just most of the nurses. We're a psych unit, Ruthie. Two people found love on planet diazepam. Break out the cake and champagne. Now you're smiling. Now you're funny. OK, so I can't do stand-up. Slapstick's really my thing. Want to witness the full blossom of my comedic genius? Do I get to wear my frizzy wig and clown shoes? Half an hour, by the greenhouse. I'm hot. <laughs> I'm sending me the dry cleaning you bill for that. Hmm. Well, I'm run the risk of having to speak to the most conceited, rude, obnoxious and ignorant man I've ever had the misfortune to meet. Which 
It looks like someone's going to have to do anyway. Who's this Dr Dawson? It's the locum we had last week. Oh, what can we... So, according to this, Dr Flynn has got Hodgkin's lymphoma. He was in remission last year, but now his symptoms are back, so he came in on Wednesday. Dr Dawson ran some tests, so just waiting for a full blood count and biochemical profile from St Phil's. Oh. oh, damn. He needs to see this. Don't suppose you could get him on his mobile? Coffin and you don't hear that every day, do you? Are you up for the challenge, though, lads? Right? <laughs> 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 okay. Uh, who said politics is the art of looking for trouble, finding it everywhere, diagnosing it incorrectly, and applying the wrong remedies? Dinner. It was none other than that seminal political thinker, the late great Marx. Grow up, sure, Mark. When did a guy like me deserve a house call? Uh, since a guy like you left this. Okay. Well, I uh, guess this restores a little of my faith in an accident prone NHS. Hope I've not wasted your valuable time. Uh, I've got your test results back from St. Phil, so we need to talk. Yeah, well, uh, thanks. I appreciate your concern, but GP as obsessive stalker isn't my idea of fun. Right, now you are wasting my time. I've lost six kilos in the past three weeks. I'm tired most of the time, waking up in a sweat that could float the bed. Right, so if your symptoms are back, then you need to see me. You're just going to tell me that the gift that keeps on giving is back. <laughs> Dr Flynn, it's, uh, it's Hodgkin's lymphoma. You've been in remission, and now it looks possible that your symptoms are back. As far as I can see, your cancer's recurrent, which means that you're going to need treatment. Yeah. Well, let me uh, tell you something about treatment, Dr Bell. I I've seen the whole chemo movie and I'm talking the director's cut. Car chase is crap, the, the bad guy's a joke, and I start to fall asleep halfway through. So, what, you want to do nothing? I'm not doing nothing. I've got a job. A job I can't do while you're here. <laughs> Look. Do you want to know what I want to do? I want to teach a bunch of middle-class kids, all of whom are about to get slaughtered in next month's exams. I want to write a book I can't finish, mark an essay. You want to know what I don't want? Another pointless argument with you. So you really should listen to what I've got to say? Whatever you've got to say can wait. I don't believe I'm hearing this. Then maybe you picked the wrong guy to throw coffee on. Look, I, I don't mean to be rude, but what are you? 28, 29, about 10 years older than half the kids I teach, yeah? Another fresh-faced miracle from the home counties. Oh, and here's me thinking I'm general practice Barbie. 
There's nothing you can tell me right now I'm going to want to hear. Do you want to know what I can see? Don't, don't give a damn. Now, will you just get the hell out of my office? OK, fine, fine. Have it your way. You go off and give your lectures on Thatcherism's evils or whatever it is you do to those middle-class kids who pay your salary, and in the meantime, I will be in my office. Only let's get one thing absolutely clear here, Dr Flynn. I'm prepared to treat you, but I would prefer an apology first. You won't get it. You don't think? Well, that just goes to show how much you underestimate me. And just for the record, I am not from the home counties. Yeah, hi. Sorry, hi. Are you all right? What, me? Yeah, I'm fine. Why shouldn't I be? Oh, no reason. Listen, I was wondering whether you knew anything about why Archie and Michelle are behaving like a couple of school kids. You see, Archie says that the cheaper inhaler that Michelle wants to order will not save us money because it's only effective at a higher dose. And Michelle says he's wrong, and I'm sick to death of listening to them, so in desperation, I'm calling you. I haven't got time to do other people's thinking. Well, maybe I should tell them that, then. Look, I don't care what you tell them, Julie. Yeah, I think they both need to grow up. There will be wild geese in Moscow this winter, comrade. OK, 007. What's in the box? I could tell you, but... Take this to the campus pharmacy. Make sure that you finish the course. But if you're not feeling better in two or three days, call back. Okay, thanks. How am I doing? Oh, six to go. Couple of minutes. Sure. to mind my own business that I'm interfering. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to snap at you. This wouldn't have anything to do with the collision, a complete lack of courtesy in coffee, by any chance, would it? I really need you to see this. You promised me this isn't a joke. I swear, I saw it run across the floor. It is huge. OK, so where's Captain Chaos? What? I saw the pair of you in here earlier. Oh. I'll give you 9 out of 10 for effort. Trudy, that is harsh. So, what am I sensing here? <sighs> Live told, perhaps? Or the predictable but guaranteed to shock plastic spider? The spider. We call him Colin. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Yes! <laughs> Hilarious. Very, very funny. So what's his problem? Medically, I think he's got recurrent Hodgkins, which means he needs further investigation. Possibly chemo, otherwise... Otherwise he's got a problem with you. Mm. Which up till now has expressed itself as rudeness. To the point where you have felt the need to go and speak to him in his office. Oh, no, well, he left his bag. All right, he left his bag, but also I did go and speak to him. Dare I ask what was said? Well, I told him that I was prepared to have him as a patient, but that he owed me an apology. Which he hasn't done. Right, so I can lead the horse to water, but... Melody, I know you already know this, but if you are being threatened by a patient... I'm not being threatened. He's just an obstinate, clumsy, blue-collar snob. 
He's got a massive problem relating to women. I mean, he's got me down as some kind of bimbo. He's got chips on both shoulders. I cannot stand the sight of him. I dislike him more than any man I've ever met, none of which is the issue. Well, I can't wait to find out what is. Well, I've got a patient who needs long-term care, who's being obnoxious before we've even started. You know, he has to see me as a professional, or nothing I try and do for him will work. I am a doctor, I'm not some dumb blonde who carries a stethoscope. Yeah, and as a doctor, you don't know when he's gonna phone. He may not have that kind of time. But I need an apology. You need to chill. So what, I just, I just back down? Oh, well, I'd call it more professional detachment. Success. Teamwork. Mm -hmm. Toy snake in your pocket, or are you just pleased to see me? <laughs> so, talking of stand up, why didn't the Puritans believe in sex standing up? It'll keep. What? Mike, I appreciate what you're doing, but Annie knows exactly how things stand. In that case, it's a pity I'm not Annie. You are. Um, I wanted to ask you a question. If I was prepared to say, I'm sorry, on one condition, what would you say? What's the condition? I've got one patient left to see. If I apologise, you're on reception waiting when I'm done. You'll never do it. I'm sorry. That I covered you in coffee. I was being clumsy. It was my fault. There, now get your sorry self down here. Joe McKenna? Yeah. Come and take a seat. What can I do for you? Oh, uh, I've been struggling with my course lately. <laughs> not, not meeting deadlines. It's not that I don't care, it's just... I, I've been missing my family a lot recently. And I don't really have anyone here that I could talk to. <laughs> and my tutor just ignores me. He keeps... Snapping at me, and I just go. Oh, Mark. It's okay. <laughs> I um, I saw you in the politics corridor earlier, didn't I? Yeah. Is your tutor Dr. Flynn? <laughs> right. I knew it. Woke up this morning, clean out a dental floss. It's got nothing to do with your breath. Well, it certainly can't be my technique. Free download? www.tellsmithy.com My inbox gets pretty full, but it's you, so... Let me see if I can work this out. Girl meets boy. And your boy's called Davy. What follows is pretty bad. Very bad. How are we defining very bad? As bad as that. That is bad. Maybe I'm not the best guy to talk to about this. You need someone who's good at complex. The average relationship with me is a one-night stand, ideally followed by the chance to apologise. <laughs> it doesn't get like that if you keep it simple. It can be simple. We can keep it simple. 
Simple is good, yeah? Simple is friend. Simple is big heap fun. Don't you ever get tired of the sound of your own voice? You know, if I'm honest, I don't. Better now, thanks. Cars on the house. <laughs> thanks for listening. Come through. Joe McKenna. She didn't have any trouble remembering you. Want to tell me what I'm accused of? Well, no, that would breach her patient confidentiality. I'd rather talk about you. Now, <clears throat> your blood test results are abnormal, which suggests a recurrence. So I'm going to want to do an examination of palpable lymph nodes. You're going to need to see your haematologist, and you may also need another CAT scan, um, a PET scan, maybe a bone marrow biopsy. All roads leading to chemo. All roads leading to helping you to control this disease. Now, I'm going to need to check your neck. Sure. And um, your armpits. Fine. And groin. So, you're not from the home counties? No. Was I even close? Warwickshire. Lift your arm. Did you always want to do this? What, poke around under here? Be a medic. Well, you know, it was the 90s. The uh, coal mines were all dead. The shipyards had all the welders they'd ever need. Did you always want to be a doctor? Yeah, I did. Why? So I needed a challenge. I want to explain about Joe McKenna. Joe McKenna wasn't part of our deal. I still want to explain. OK. Then why is it that you are always such a... What? Hard ass. And I don't just mean with her, I mean with me. Because I saw you at the cafeteria. I bought two students a mug of coffee. Yeah. And you were funny. And you were generous. Funny and generous. You knew what you got, and you were laughing. Proving what? Well, I don't know. Maybe that underneath all this tough guy crap, you're actually a very nice man. I'm married. <laughs> I, I know that's hard to believe. To the woman in the photograph? Annie. Who's Mike? Annie's brother. And what's all this got to do with Joe McKenna? Well, Joe's just one of my first-year students. She's finding it hard to keep up. If she's been round here to tell you that I'm bullying rather than helping her right now, then you should probably believe her. Annie and I have not spent one night apart in nearly 15 years. Until four nights ago, I started a row. She walked out. Problem is, she hasn't walked back. Here's a word of advice. Your cancer might be back. You need to put an end to the Cold War. Find her. Tell her. I know the next thing you're going to do is ask me to drop my pants, so... before my last shred of dignity is wrenched away, I'd... I'd like to say respectfully, if it's not too late, that I'm sorry. OK, cowboy. It's showtime.
You have got exactly two minutes to get dressed. <sighs> Ruth, this really isn't a good idea, is it? Oh, hi. Jo, hi. Is everything OK? Oh, yeah, yeah, fine, thanks. Um, thanks for earlier. I just survived a tutorial with Dr Flynn. <laughs> he, um, he asked me to tell you that he'd like to take your skirt to the dry cleaners and that um, he's spoken to someone called Annie. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> chance to finish my joke. Why didn't the Puritans believe in sex standing up? Because they thought it might lead to dancing. Maybe you should leave that one with me. Just leave it with me. I was a psychotic axe murderer. I'm trying to help us a bit, tell us what happened. <laughs> hey, hey, it's okay. Louise, well, what's this all about? You have to tell me what's going on. Dr. Smithson. Dr. Hassan. I'm Ruth's doctor. Dirty Mac, fat cigar, you're a dead ringer. Mark tries to help a teenager blinded by love from spending the rest of his life in jail. Diagnosis murder, coming next on BBC One Scotland.